taking a look at market geometry with Ross Beck. And Ross, I didn't do that well in geometry. So help me out. What is market geometry? Well, Karen, I think you've heard of that famous trader, W.D. Gann. Yes, I have. Very successful trader. He used geometry. He really pioneered that idea of te uh, technical analysis using geometry in the markets. And what's interesting about geometry, it's something that is appealing to most people. If you look around the, the world, it, let's say, for an example, you went into your kid's bedroom and it was messy. What do you say? Clean it up. <laughs> That's right. You want order. That's what we want, right? And so um, humans have this desire to see order all the time. When we see disorder, see a messy yard of your neighbor, get out there and mow that grass and plant the flowers. And so anyways, how does that relate to the markets? Well, it really has to do with when we look at a chart, the first thing that we see typically, uh, our in gut instinct, if it's not a clear trend up or down, maybe a sideways chop, we look at that and we see confusion. The Masons have a saying, uh, order out of chaos. Yes. Okay, and so what we do instinctively is try to find order in the apparent chaos on the chart. And so how do we do that? It typically, if we don't have any other programming of what to do with technical indicators, etc., one of the first things that a person will do when they see chaos, it's almost like looking at the clouds. You lay on your back, you look up there, you see something in the clouds, right? Some sort of pattern, right. Yeah, at some point you might see something there. Is it really there? Well, probably not. But if you and I kept on staring at the same cloud, sometimes we see the same pattern. And that's what happens when you have millions of people looking at an apparent chaos or apparent chaos in the financial markets, we start to see the same pattern. And so if these patterns conform to certain simple geometric shapes like the circle, the square, the triangle, and the triangle is probably one of those most common ones that people trade with, uh, if we see a pattern like that, often everyone, even on the subconscious level, will have a tendency to want to behave in a similar manner. So it becomes almost a self-fulfilling prophecy? And by all means. And okay. if you think about it, too, uh, the triangle is the more common one, but maybe you've seen these uh, arcs that take place. And as they start to go vertical, we know that typically there's going to be a reversal. So that really is a portion of a circle. So there's a number of these different shapes that you'll find on the charts, and people tend to have a tendency to behave in a similar manner at the completion of those patterns. So, so that's what I focus on. What markets do you focus on? So because it's mass psychology, this applies to everything. So Forex, stocks, futures, currencies. Uh, so you can apply this on multiple time frames. I do find that on daily charts it seems to be a little bit more reliable. Um, it gets a little bit more sloppy on the intraday data, but uh, I prefer the daily. And how far have you back-tested this? Well, that's the interesting thing about geometry. It's very difficult to back-test because it's all related to, um, with, since the advent of the personal computer, mm -hmm. uh, prior to that we had paper charts that's and the right. time and the price scaling mm -hmm. was perfect. And you do that every afternoon at the close. That's yes. right. Okay. So now to squish all the bars on a piece of paper like that, it was quite a, you couldn't do it. But now with the computer, you got this little button, you can squish all that data onto, onto a screen like that. And along with that, there's the downside of, let's say you drew a circle on that chart, and then you start squishing the bars, well, all of a sudden it's going to become this ellipse. It's no longer a circle, right? So really, uh, W.D. Gann, like I said, he pioneered that concept. It's almost like a lost art geometry in the financial markets because a lot of software packages don't allow you to lock the time and the price scaling. And then, of course, it begs the question, what is the time and price scaling? And so uh, Gann thought it was really a number that we had to go through history and figure out what that number is, the relationship between the time and the price. But if you go f too far back, the psychology of those people that have passed away... Totally different from the traders today dealing with this volatility. Exactly, gotcha. right? So now each one has their own personality, each product, right? And we've got to find out who that composite person is. And one of the best ways to determine the time and the price ratio is simply by looking at the most recent uh, trends. From top to bottom, you see how many points it went in how many days, and that's really going to give you a barometer as to what the time and the price relationships are currently versus what happened 100 years ago. And from there, you get the geometric patterns and your strategies. Absolutely. So you can see how this can play into other uh, styles of trading. It is, I call it geometric trading using the market geometry. Just give you a little bit more of a bias as to what you think is going to happen next. Ross, thanks for sharing your insights. Thank you so much.
Ross Beck has been my guest. You're watching TheMoneyShow.com Video Network.